Hello guys, this is Dr. Possibility from Excel Academy. Kindly take note that Excel Academy has opened up its new branch at Ridgeway Campus. And this new branch is just five minutes away from Wunza Ridgeway Campus. Please make sure that you register with us and make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel. In this class, I have a simple task of explaining what a cell is, its structure, and the functions. So when we talk of a cell, a cell is just the basic unit that forms a whole organism. This means that a cell is just the building block of what of a living thing. A cell is just a building block of a living thing. This also means that it is this cell which governs all metabolic reactions that takes place in a human being. We need to understand that metabolic reactions are being classified into anabolic and catabolic. Therefore, both anabolic and catabolic reactions which are making up the metabolic reactions are being governed by what we are calling a cell. A big question that we need to understand is that how does a cell become an organism so we need to understand that a group of cells come together to form what we are calling a tissue and a group of tissues will come together to form what we are calling an organ and these organs will come together to form what we are calling the system and it is these systems that come together to form what we are calling an organism so a cell is more like a building block it is the basic unit that forms a what an organism therefore we need to understand that all metabolic reactions are being governed by a cell one other thing that we need to understand is that most cells cannot be seen using a microscope it cannot be seen using our naked eyes. Therefore, we normally use a microscope for us to see the content of the cell, for us to see the lysosome, for us to see the gauge apparatus, for us to see the cell membrane, we need a what? A microscope. As a result, most cells are said to be what? Microscopic. Like I've said, when we say cells are microscopic, this simply means that we need to use a microscope for us to understand the content of a cell, for us to understand how the cell looks like, for us to understand its composition, we need to use what? A microscope. So, when you talk of cells, cells are being classified in so many ways. There are different types of cells. We have the cilia cells, we have the epithelial cells, we have the nerve cells, which normally lose their um, cell division component. We have the plant cells, but it doesn't matter how many cells we can talk of. What we need to understand that these cells are being classified into two main types. This means that whatever cell you can talk about, they have to fall under these two types of cells. So there are two main types of cells, which are the first one is the prokaryotic cells. So when we talk of prokaryotic cells, these cells, they normally lack what we are calling the organelles. And most of these prokaryotic cells are found in unicellular organisms such as the bacteria. On the other hand, or another class of cells which we can talk about is the what? The eukaryotic cells. So eukaryotic cells, these are cells that are normally found in what? In animals and also in plants. As a result, these eukaryotic cells are normally classified into animal cells, into animal cells, and also plant cells. So, 
We also need to understand the basic differences between animal cells and plant cells. Remember, there are two main types of cells. One, the prokaryotic cells, which are found in unicellular organisms such as the bacteria. And we also have eukaryotic cells, which are found in multicellular organisms such as animals and plants. And these eukaryotic cells are normally classified into two categories, which is the animal cell, of which these cells, they do not have a cell wall. And we also have another group of eukaryotic cells, which is the plant cells. And these guys normally have the cell wall. All right. In terms of the diagram, this is how a prokaryotic cell looks like. So, some of the content of a prokaryotic cell we can look at are the capsule, we can talk about the cell membrane, we can talk about the cell hole, we can talk about the cytoplasm, we can talk about the ribosome. Ribosomes are a special feature which are found in both eukaryotic cells and what prokaryotic cells. As a result, these ribosomes are normally said not to be organelles because one component of prokaryotic cell is that these cells do not have organelles. On the other hand, when you talk about eukaryotic cells, these eukaryotic cells, they contain what we are calling the organelles. Good examples of organelles we can identify in eukaryotic cells are the goat bodies, you can also talk about the mitochondria, you can talk about the nucleus, you can talk about the endoplasmic reticulum, and many other um, organelles. So, like I said, the ribosomes are found in both prokaryotic cells and also in eukaryotic cells. One other content we need to talk about when we are talking about the ribosomes is that the ribosomes they have a resolving power which is below 0 0.2 micrometers as a result we cannot see the ribosomes using an um, an ordinary light microscope please take note of that for your exam sake like i said Excel Academy has opened up its new branch at Ridgeway Campus. So in this picture, I have just shown how nice and good our new class is at Ridgeway Campus. So please make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel and make sure that you register with Excel Academy. So let me quickly look at one of the content which I mentioned when you talk of eukaryotic cells so eukaryotic cells have special features which we normally call the cell organelles so these cell organelles are normally found in the what in the cytoplasm of a cell now what are organelles so organelles are just small structures within the cell cytoplasm that carry out vital roles necessarily to maintain cell structure and the function. So the function of a cell, the structure of a cell, they are being done by these so-called organelles. Organelles are just small structures within the cytoplasm. Remember, these organelles are governing and also maintaining the function of the cell. These organelles, in short, are helping in the metabolic reactions of a what? A cell. For example, you can talk about the, the mitochondria, which is playing a role in the what? In the, um, in the respiratory process, which is there to produce energy in form of ATP. So this is just an, a picture 
showing a eukaryotic cell and in this picture you can see different organelles. These organelles they operate together to make sure that the cell is carrying out its function. These organelles are also working together to maintain the structure of a what of a cell. So please make sure that you pause this video, you look at the content, you look at these organelles and make sure that you are able to identify each of these organelles. So the first organelle we can look at is the plasma membrane. We need to understand that the plasma membrane, it is a bilayered membrane and this membrane it just simply controls what goes in and out of the cell. And this is done through the help of the phospholipid bilayer. And we also need to understand that the plasma membrane is approximately 7.5 nanometer. Every person, every person needs to understand the size of the plasma membrane. Take note of that. A plasma membrane is 7.5 nanometer thick and it consists of a bilayer of phospholipids. And these phospholipids are made up of what? Of two parts. You have the hydrocarbon chains and also the head which is normally charged. So this phospholipid, this plasma membrane, as I said, it is just there to control what enters and leaves the cell. It controls what enters and leaves the cell. It is the one that governs the transportation of the cell. It's the one that can state what's going to enter the cell and what's going to leave the cell. All right. So, due to that, we can say that when we talk of this cell membrane, the cell membrane is said to be what? Semi-permeable. The reason why this cell membrane is said to be semi-permeable is that it is able to control. It's not everything that passes through the cell membrane. Some things have to be filtered. Some things do not need to enter through the what? The cell membrane. And sometimes the, the cell membrane need to control the entry of certain ions, the entry of certain molecules. It's need to make sure that some ions are not in excess inside the cell or outside the cell. As a result, the cell membrane is said to be semi-permeable. The reason is very simple. And the reason is that it controls what enters and what leaves the cell. All this is being governed due to the structure of the cell membrane. We need to understand that the cell membrane is made up of a bilayer of phospholipids. And also, it is also made up of, what, 2% of cholesterol. And it is also made up of protein channels and also integral proteins. All those things, all those special features are making sure that the cell membrane is what is semi-permeable. If you look at this diagram, this diagram has some important features such as the integral protein. You can also talk about the, the polar head of the phospholipid and also the inside which is nonpolar. If you look at that, these are just hydrocarbons which are making sure that they are controlling the entry and exit of certain 
molecules. Other content which helps or which makes this um, this cell membrane to be semi-permeable is that this cell membrane consists of proteins like I've said some of the proteins are the integral protein and other proteins we can talk about are the peripheral proteins. Please make sure that you understand the basic content of the cell membrane. Like I said, the cell membrane, it is a membrane which is made up of a bilayer of phospholipid. Note that the head of the phospholipid, it is polar and the tail is normally um, non-polar. In other terms, you need to understand that the head is hydrophilic, whereas the tail is hydrophobic. For this reason, you need to understand that the head interacts with the outside and the inside of the cell. So this is the inside of the cell, and this is the outside of the cell. So when you talk of the head of this uh, phospholipid, it's the one which is interacting with the outside of the cell and also the inside of the cell. But this hydrocarbon chain, they normally do not interact with the outside and the inside of the cell. All right. So, like I said, because the phospholipid is made up of two important components. The polar component, which is hydrophilic, and also the non-polar component, which is made up of the fat acid. This component is hydrophobic. So the corrective name or the corrective term, which is used on such a molecule, which is both polar and non-polar, is said to be what amphipathic. So when you talk of phospholipid, phospholipids are amphipathic. This simply means that they are normally um, polar and nonpolar. They have a side which is able to interact with polar molecules such as water, and they also have another component which does not interact with the polar component such as water. All right, I think this has uh, already been explained when you talk of the polar head of the phospholipid which faces the outside of the, the cell membrane and the other one is facing the inside. So the polar head is the one which is facing the outside, interacting with the outside environment and also this same polar head is facing the inside of the cell, interacting with the inside content of the cell. But we also have the tails. These tails, they are normally not interacting with the inside or the outside. These guys, they normally interact with each other through the hydrophobic interactions. All right. Now, one thing we need to understand is that the, the cell membrane does not just um, does not just contain the, the phospholipid. This cell membrane also contains what the cholesterol. Take note of the percentage of cholesterol. It is two percent of cholesterol which is found in the cell membrane. And this cholesterol, it just controls the fluidity of the what? Of the cell membrane. The cholesterol, it is a type of lipid which regulates the fluidity of the what? Of the cell membrane. Please make sure that you know the percent of cholesterol which is found in the cell membrane. And the percentage of this cholesterol is just 2% of whatever is in the cell membrane. Okay, the other things that are found in the cell membrane are the integral protein 
and also the peripheral protein. Both the integral proteins and the peripheral protein are helping in the transportation of molecules within the cell. Take note that because of the presence of the uh, phospholipids which are amphipathic, some molecules cannot penetrate through the cell membrane. As a result, some of these molecules need to use other channels of them to enter through the, the cell or to come out of the cell. Hence, there is a need of this integral protein and peripheral protein. Other things that are found in the plasma membrane, which is the cell membrane, are things such as the glycoprotein, glycolipid, oligosaccharide, and lipoproteins. All that they are found in the cell membrane. Please make sure that you register with Excel Academy and make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Now, the next thing that you need to understand is how are things being transported through the cell membrane? Remember that the cell membrane is normally semi-permeable and it is not everything that is transported in the same way. So we need to understand in what way are these things being transported through the what? Through the cell membrane. We need to understand the modes of movement of substances across the cell membrane. So some substances normally pass through the cell membrane through passive transport. So when you talk of passive transport, this is the movement of substances from a higher concentration to a lower concentration without the need of energy. So in passive transport, there is no need of energy. And this passive transport can also be classified into three types. You can talk of simple diffusion, facilitated diffusion, and also osmosis, which is also part of this mode of movement um, through substances under passive transport. All of these, which I have listed down, which are part of passive transport, they do not need energy. Like I said, some they need energy and others do not need energy. So another class of transport through the cell membrane is active transport. So when you talk of active transport, it's just the opposite of passive transport. And in this case, you need to understand that energy is being required. Then when you talk of the other mode of transport, you can talk of endocytosis. And this endocytosis can be classified into phagocytosis or pinocytosis. Please make sure that you follow up these classes. The other thing you can talk about is exocytosis. So when you talk of endocytosis, endocytosis is the movement of substances into the cell. And when you talk of exocytosis, this is the movement of cells outside the cell. So, endocytosis into the cell, exocytosis outside the cell. All right. Okay. After understanding that, like I have said, um, when you talk of endocytosis, this endocytosis is being uh, classified into two categories. You have phagocytosis and you also have um, mind, uh, pinocytosis. So these two diagrams, they are just simply showing the two mode of endocytosis. I'm pretty sure for our register students, they were able to understand how these two can be differentiated. For those who are not registered with us, make sure that you register with us and make sure that you research more on these two processes. Okay, so let me quickly look at another component of the cell. Remember, I've just talked about the cell membrane, which is being made up of a lipid bilayer and also other 
components such as 2% of cholesterol, such as peripheral and integral protein, such as oligosaccharide, such as the glycoprotein, and many, many other parts. So, one thing we need to understand is that a cell is also made up of a fluid part which is known as the cytoplasm. So the cytoplasm is the fluid part of the cell. And this fluid part of the cell, it contains important structures which are known as organelles. Take note that these organelles are playing a role in the support of the structure of a cell and it also helps in the control of the function of the cell. Hence, one thing we need to understand is that these organelles are found in a fluid which is known as the cytoplasm. But it is not every organelle that is said to be in this cytoplasm. A very good example of an organelle which is not said to be in the cytoplasm is the nucleus. I do hope you guys are able to understand uh, what a cytoplasm is, what is in the cytoplasm. The first thing that is found in the cytoplasm it is the interconnected filaments and the fibers. The other thing which is found in the cytoplasm is its fluid part which is known as the cytonsol. So the cytonsol is the fluid part of the cytoplasm. Please make sure that you understand these small, small things because these are areas of interest in terms of examination. So the cytosol is the fluid part of the cytoplasm. Another thing like I've already mentioned is that the other content of the cytoplasm is the organelles of which we have highlighted that not the nucleus. Why is it that the nucleus is not an organelle in the cytoplasm? Please make sure that you research on that. But one of the reasons why the nucleus is not part of the cytoplasm is that the nucleus is made up of the membrane. And these membranes, they normally separate the nucleus from the cytoplasm. All right. The other thing that we need to understand is that the cytoplasm also contains the storage substances. There are so many um, macro molecules which are being stored within the cell. And these macro uh, molecules will be used in terms of um, controlling the chemical reactions. Like I said, it is in the cell where metabolic reactions take place. So this macromolecules such as proteins they will simply act as enzymes and they will be able to control the mechanical the metabolic reactions that take place in a what in a cell other cell content which are being stored are the lipids and the other uh, content which are there are glycogen which will be used in terms of energy production or energy uh, synthesis um, when you talk of ATP and the likes. All right, so that's all about the cytoplasm. Please make sure that you understand which important organelle is not in the cytoplasm. A very good important organelle which is not in the cytoplasm is the nucleus. Also take note of the fluid part of the cytoplasm which is known as the cytonsol. All right. So let's quickly look at this important component of the cell, which is the nucleus. So the nucleus is like the governing body of the cell. The nucleus is the governing body of the cell. It's the one which governs the metabolic reactions that takes place in the world, in the cell. It is the one which controls all the cell activities. All the cell activities that takes place in the cell are being 
controlled by the nucleus. And one thing we need to understand is that this nucleus, it has two membranes, the outer membrane and the inner membrane, of which the outer membrane is the one which is interacting with the what? With the cytoplasm, of which I've already explained what the cytoplasm is, what is it, it is made up of, and the activities that takes place in the cytoplasm. Please take note of the fact that the nucleus is the largest organelle of the cell. The nucleus is the largest organelle of the cell and it is not part of the cytoplasm because it is separated from the cytoplasm by the membrane that it contains because this is it is a double membrane structure and this nucleus is the one which is controlling the metabolic reaction now yes it is controlling the metabolic reaction what's making it to control such metabolic reactions so when you talk of the nucleus it is also acts as as a storage of genetic information which can be simplified in terms of what um, dna so genetic materials which contain dna they are being stored in the what in the nucleus okay you need to remember that um, the phenotype, the genotype of every organism is being governed by the genetic content of what of that human being. And this genetic content, okay, this genetic content is being stored in what we are calling the nucleus. Now, what's making this nucleus? Like I said, the nucleus is made up of what? the nuclear envelope, which I simply said the nuclear membranes, okay? The other thing which this nucleus is made up of, it is the nuclear pores. So, this DNA, which is in the nucleus, this DNA will need to do what? Will need to be replicated. And from replication, we need to understand that even transcription will take place inside the nucleus. So when the DNA is being transcribed to form mRNA, this mRNA will need to leave the nucleus through what we are calling the nuclear pores. Then the other content we can talk about is the nucleolus. The nucleolus, it is where the ribosomes are formed. It is where also the, the RNA is formed in the nucleolus. Okay. Then we have the nucleoplasm, which is the fluid part of the nucleus. And we also have the chromatin. But remember that the nucleus controls all the chemical activities that takes place in the human being and it also plays a role in the storage of the genetic information such as DNA. So, let's quickly look at other the, the basic structure of a nucleus. So, please make sure that you pause the video, look at this content, and also make sure that you know each and every part of the nucleus. Okay? All right, so the first one we can talk about is the nuclear envelope. Like I said, the nuclear envelope, it is the membrane around and it is the double membrane of which you have the outer membrane and the inner membrane. And you need to understand that the outer membrane is interacting with the cytoplasm. And in most cases, the outer membrane continues together with the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Because one thing you need to understand also is that the ribosome are also formed in the what in the nucleus. So such content needs to be understood. So when the ribosome are formed in the nucleus, they will need to live through what the nuclear pores. When the mRNA is being formed in the nucleolus, 
they will need to leave the nucleus and go into the cytoplasm so that protein synthesis can take place. All that will live through the what? The nuclear pulse. But take note of important things that I've mentioned. One, the nuclear envelope. It is, it is standing in between the nucleus and also the cytoplasm, of which this nuclear envelope is being divided into the outer and the inner. And the outer membrane of the nuclear envelope is the one which interacts with the cytoplasm, and in most cases, it continues with the rough endoplasmic reticula. Okay. And then one important content which is formed in the, in the nucleus, it is the ribosome. Okay. I'm sure that has been understood and that has been explained. I think this has already been explained. Like I said, the nuclear envelope is a double membrane of the nucleus that enclose the what? The genetic material. We are talking about the eukaryotic organisms, okay? And these eukaryotic organisms, they have a what? A nucleus and this nucleus and the nuclear envelope which is a double membrane, which is a what? A double membrane. Why is it a double membrane? It is having what? The outer membrane and the inner membrane. And this nuclear envelope is protecting the inside. And one of the things that are inside the, the nucleus, you can talk about the what? The genetic material. What are these genetic material? We are just simply talking about what the DNA. Okay, so please make sure that you understand such component of the nucleus. Okay, which of which we are just talking about what the, the nuclear envelope. I think this has already been explained. The two um, the two layers of which these two layers are normally made of lipids. I think I've already explain that one important point which i've already explained is that the outer membrane is a continuous is continuous with what the rough endoplasmic reticulum so we have the reticulum which is playing a role in the internal or intracellular transportation we have the reticular uh, endoplasmic reticulum which is playing a role in the intracellular transportation. So this endoplasmic reticulum is being classified into two, depending on the presence or absence of the what? Of the ribosome. So when we look at the, the nucleus, the nucleus is producing the ribosomes. So when these ribosomes leave the nucleus through the nuclear pores, they automatically settle on the what? On the endoplasmic reticulum. And this type of endoplasmic reticulum, which is having the, the ribosome, is known as what? The rough endoplasmic reticulum. So as a result, we can say the outer membrane, remember, we have a double membrane. The nuclear envelope is a double membrane. So this nuclear envelope it's, it has the outer and the inner. So the inner, it's the one which is attaching itself, which is interacting with the endoplasmic reticula. All right. I hope you guys are following, and I hope you guys are also able to subscribe to our YouTube channel and make sure that you register with us. We understand your situation. We understand what you need. This is the reason why Excel Academy has hired good tutors who have walked through your path, who can easily explain to you in a way that you can understand and all you need is to revise and go through a lot of questions. So I've already explained about the nuclear pores. So these nuclear pores are just tiny holes around the nuclear envelope. So these are just holes. And these walls are helping um, in the entry and exit of substances in the what in the 
in the in the nucleus so this nuclear pores they help in the regulation of exchange of what materials guys i've already talked about this exchange of materials i just mentioned about mrna isn't it when mrna much is is being created in the nucleus there it undergoes the splicing whereby this mrna will need to to be what to be matured in such a way that this mrna will be what will be will be will, will be shorter than the the what the one which is inside so when this mrna matures it will need to what to leave the what the nucleus and for this mrna which is which is part of rna it's leaving the nucleus to go into what the cytoplasm and such is taking place because of the presence of this what nuclear pores so the nuclear pores are the ones which are allowing the substances to move out of the cell so even other things such as proteins they also live through that the nucleolus okay so the nucleolus is part of the nucleus and this nucleolus um it is there to help what to help the 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 formation and synthesis of what ribosome even mrna rrna they are all formed in the what in the nucleolus you understand so please make sure that you understand the content you understand some questions are so tricky whether you are asked which of the um the the ribosome are formed or are synthesized in the what in the dash okay so one thing you need to understand is that ribosomes are being synthesized and are uh, assembled in the what in the nucleolus all right so that's it about the nucleolus here in my notes i've just talked about the ribosomes but remember i've also talked about the formation of mrna the synthesis of rrna um, which is also very important this means that dna transcription takes place in this organ which is simply the nucleolus so guys make sure that you understand the the components endoplasmic reticulum i think i've already talked about the endoplasmic reticulum this endoplasmic reticulum like i said it plays the role in the intracellular transportation meaning it helps in the in in the movement of substances within the cell okay intracellular transportation like i said it just simply means intra means inside okay or within the cell so when you talk of the endoplasmic reticulum it mainly helps in the movement of substances within the cell okay within the cell okay so make sure that you understand that now I think I'm just repeating myself some things over and over again why because I want you guys to understand the content. So, like I said, when I was talking about the nucleus, the nuclear envelope having the outer membrane which interact with the rough endoplasmic reticulum, I said the endoplasmic reticulum which is playing a role in intracellular, okay? In the intracellular transportation or movement this endoplasmic reticulum is being classified in two two groups depending on the presence or absence of the ribosomes so the first type is the rough endoplasmic reticulum the rough endoplasmic reticulum is the one which has what the ribosome and then the one the other one is the smooth endoplasmic reticulum okay so when you talk of the rough endoplasmic reticulum this type of 
uh, endoplasmic reticulum is playing a role in what? Protein synthesis. Because of the presence of the ribosomes. Okay? It's playing a role in that. And this guy is normally has a lot of what? Fibroblasts. Okay? Then, when you talk of the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, we need to understand that some chemicals, okay, some poisonous chemicals might enter a cell. So this smooth endoplasmic reticulum, it plays a role in what? In, it, uh, in fighting against such toxic substances. So we'll talk about this in the next uh, slide. So this is just... Um, this is just a picture which is showing the two types of um, endoplasmic reticulum. If you look at this, this is the nucleus here. This nucleus will now interact with this part, which is the rough endoplasmic reticulum, having what? The ribosomes there. And then you also have the outer side, which is the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Please pause this video look at the content, make sure that you are able to label all those parts. All right, guys. So let's quickly look at the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Like I said, this rough endoplasmic reticulum, it is a continuous with the nuclear envelope, specifically the outer membrane of the nuclear envelope. Like I have said, these ribosomes are being produced in the what? In the nucleolus of the nucleus. So these ribosomes will normally attach themselves on the rough endoplasmic what? reticulum. So we can simply say that the rough um, endoplasmic reticulum, it contains what? The ribosomes. And what, what role does it play? So this means that this rough endoplasmic reticulum, because it contains ribosomes, it helps in the synthesis of what? Of proteins. Okay? And it's a modification. So the rough endoplasmic reticulums play a role in the, in the synthesis of proteins. Like I said, endoplasmic reticulum, they play a role in the what? Intracellular transportation. Okay? So this means that this same... Um, in the rough endoplasmic reticulum, which helps in the synthesis of proteins, these guys they also help in the transportation of what of proteins. Take note, like I've already said, most of the things that I'm going to explain later on are things that I've already what explained. So when you talk of the rough endoplasmic reticulum. This is a very important because it has abundant what fibroblasts. This is also an exam question which you are going to be examined on. And most of the lecture notes, they do not have such points. All right. With that being said, we can talk about the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Like, um, like I said, there are some chemicals poisonous chemicals that can what that can be that can penetrate through the cell so such poisonous uh, chemicals need to be what detoxified okay so this means that the smooth endoplasmic reticulum it plays a role in detoxification of what chemical substances what other function does this smooth endoplasmic reticulum press. So this smooth endoplasmic reticulum, it plays a role in the formation of what? Rip, uh, lipids. Okay? In the formation of lipids. And one good example of lipids we can talk about are what? Are steroids, which have four ring structure. Okay? So the, stero the steroids uh, and other lipids are normally produced by the word smooth endoplasmic reticulum. This is a reason why organs such as the testes, such as the, the such as the ovaries, testes, 
ovaries and also the glands such as the adrenal glands they have abundant smooth endoplasmic reticulum because they are capable of producing these steroid hormones so i'm sure this has already been explained the only point which has not been explained is that the smooth endoplasmic reticulum it helps in the transportation of lipids and fats okay fats are lipids okay fats are lipids and fats are also uh, a lipid they are falling under lipids so rough endoplasmic reticulum it is synthesizing proteins because of the presence of the ribosome and this rough endoplasmic reticulum it has abundant fibroblasts and this rough endoplasmic reticulum it is also helping in uh, protein transportation but when you talk of smooth endoplasmic reticulum for which it is just specialized in the synthesis of lipids so the smooth endoplasmic reticulum is important in detoxification of the cell i think this has already been explained and i've already mentioned some few organs such as the ovaries such as the the testes such as the adrenal gland which is falling under glands playing a role in the um having a lot of smooth endoplasmic reticulum i am encouraging you all to make sure that you register with excel academy because we are going to review some content which are not in your lecturer's notes some content which need you to research for you to solve few questions and everything that is being explained here are things that are in line with the exam setup mitochondria is also known as the powerhouse mitochondria is also known as the powerhouse and it's responsible in the generation of what energy why because it plays a role in cellular respiration and this mitochondria it is a membrane bound organelle and possess its own what tna what does that mean this simply means that the mitochondria is capable of undergoing what cell division specifically mitosis this means that this mitochondria is capable of um of dividing by the process known as binary fission which is falling under what um mitosis all right take note of that take note of that take note of that so this is just the mitochondria and there is this um this this one here which is a mitochondria which has been viewed using an electron microscope okay so this one can come in the exam whereby you are asked to identify this structure and state its function okay so make sure that once again you pause the video check take a look at the the labels and understand every content ribosome where are the ribosomes produced? They are produced in the nucleolus, in the nucleus. That's where these guys are being produced. And they play a role in the words in protein synthesis. Take note that ribosomes, they are found in both eukaryotic and prokaryotic. And these ribosomes are not surrounded by a membrane. So one key difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic is that eukaryotic have what have a membrane bound organelle such as the um, such as the mitochondria. When you talk of um, ribosomes, these are not membrane bound, and they are found in both the what the 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 eukaryotic and also the prokaryotic. Like I said, their primary function is just to do what? To synthesize um, protein by the process of uh, translation. Okay, so protein, um, protein synthesis, it takes place in the ribosomes and these ribosomes can exist with the rough endoplasmic reticulum or 
they can exist as independent um, ribosome just floating in the cytoplasm so guys like i've been emphasizing on the same thing over and over again is that we as the academy have understood your situation we know what is needed this is more reason we have put in tutors who can guide you and make you have an excellent experience in your uh, health related program studies the last one we can talk about is the gorge apparatus so the gorge apparatus is involved in the synthesis of plant cell wall remember i talked about the the eukaryotic cells being divided into two categories you have the you have the the plant cell and the animal cell so the animal cell does not have a cell wall. that is the reason why it is irregular in terms of the shape but when you talk of the plant cell the plant cell has a cell wall. And this cell wall, it makes the plant cell to have a regular what? Shape. And this is the cell wall. It is being synthesized, okay, through the help of what? Gold bodies. So the gold bodies, they play a role in the what? In the, in the synthesis of cell wall in the plant cells. Then these cell walls uh, are also involved in the packaging and um, in the packaging of substances in the in the cell okay and this cell um, they contain the vesicles and these vesicles they are just helping in modification of molecules various molecules which are produced in the in the cell such as the proteins such as the lipids such as the carbohydrates Okay, all those are being modified by the vesicles, and these vesicles are found in the gorge apparatus or the gorge body. So these are just the vesicles, like this. It's just a vesicle which has been removed, and it is playing a role in the in the modification of molecules that are in the cell. All right. Let's quickly look at another important content, which is the lysosome. The lysosome are very important because they play a role in the fungal um, phagocytosis of foreign bacterial or foreign molecules. Okay, you know a cell might accidentally allow foreign material unwanted materials such as a bacteria to enter so these lysosomes they play a role in the what in the phagocytosis of those foreign materials and these lysosomes they help in the release of what um the in the release of mast cells granules okay so those mast cell granules such as is thermine, which is the mediator, they will help in the response of the cell towards the, the unwanted substances such as the bacteria. Okay, so like I've said, these contain digestive enzyme and mainly function in the hydrolysis and digestion of bacteria and other invaders. So this has already been explained. It's playing a role in the getting rid of what bacteria and other foreign materials. All right, then it helps in the renewal and breakdown of all old cells. You know, these cells need to be renewed. These cells, they normally die. So these cells need to be broken down when they're old. When they die, these cells need to be broken down by the ones by the the same the the same lysosome and they are responsible for the formation of the glanules in the mast cells i think this has already been explained so these glanules such as um histema which is a mediator so these glanules they'll help in the 
fighting against foreign materials which might have entered the cell, which have might entered an organism. All right. I think uh, that's what's very important. And the question that we need to ask ourselves is where are these lysosomes formed? Remember, I talked about the gold apparatus in plant cells helping in the formation of the cell wall of the plant cells. So the sub god apparatus, it plays a role in the formation of what? Of these lysosomes. So ribosomes in the nucleus, lysosomes that are being formed in the gorge apparatus. Let's quickly look at the peroxisomes. So these guys, just from the word, you can understand that there is an involvement of oxygen, okay? This means that this guy is playing in the, in the oxidative reactions that takes place in the cell. So these organelles that, um, that plays a role in oxidative reactions, as a result, these um, um, cells, they play a role, these same organelles, they play a role in cell signaling. So, the per peroxone, okay, these cells, they'll tell the, the cell that this is what is going to happen. This is what is happening. It's more like they are messengers to the cell. They signal the cell. They tell the cell, oh, there is a change in the environment. There is a change in the content of the what? Of the ions in the cell, okay? This, they just play a role in the what? In the signaling of the cell. And these guys, they, they, they play a role in the oxidative reactions. As a result, they are responsible in most of the metabolic reactions that takes place in the body. I think I have a diagram here, which is showing some important, um, some important structures which are known as the centrioles. So the centrioles are also part of the cell and these centrioles, they normally exist in pairs, as you can see there. And these centrioles, they normally play a role in cell division. I think when we'll be talking about um, mitosis, when we'll be talking about the when we'll be talking about meiosis, we'll talk about the different stages of mitosis. We can talk about um, prophase, anaphase, metaphase, telophase, all those. You find that the centrioles they play a role in the in that process of cell division. So make sure that you understand such content and make sure that these guys they exist as a pair of microtube structure. They exist as a pair of microtube structure. Okay, let's quickly ask ourselves, what gives a cell the, the support it needs and other proteins in the cell okay? and also other organelles? So you need to understand that the cell has an important structure Okay, and this important structure, it helps to maintain the, the cell shape. And this important structure is known as the cytoskeleton. Skeleton. In a human being, we have heard of a skeleton. It helps in support. So when you talk of the, the cytoskeleton, the cytoskeleton is helping a role in the maintaining of the shape of the the what the the cell but we need to understand that a cytoskeleton is totally different from the from the laminin so when you talk of the laminin the laminin is the one which is giving the nucleus its structural framework okay the laminin is playing a role in the provision of the um in the maintaining of the nucleus framework, okay? 
Now, when you talk of the, the cytoskeleton, the cytoskeleton is supporting, it's maintaining the shape of the what? Of the, of the nucleus. And we need to understand one thing. This cytoskeleton exists in three types. The cytoskeleton exists in three types. We have the microtube, we have the intermediate filaments, and we have the what? The microfilament. Three types of cytoskeleton. All of them playing a role in the what? In the, in the support and maintaining of the what? Of the structure. Okay? Of the cell shape. So, the cytoskeleton is of three types. We have the microfilament, we have the microtube, and we have the intermediate filament. Three structures, three types of the what? Of the cytoskeleton. And you need to know which one is the biggest and which one is the smallest. Which one is the biggest and which one is the, um, is the smallest and what to mix them okay so this is just the microfilament which is eight nanometer in size we have the microtube which is the thickest and it is 25 nanometer then we have the intermediate filament which is in between the microfilament and the microtube okay so the microfilament it is the smallest the largest it is the microtube okay and in between we have the intermediate filament which is just 10 nanometers all right i think like i said the cytoskeleton just offers the mechanical support of uh, the cell and it also helps in the support of the of the organelles. So please make sure that you understand that this same um, cytoskeleton it helps in the movement of substances. All right. Like I said, you need to understand the biggest, the thickest, and the thinnest. So the thickest among them it is the 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 microtube, and this microtube it is the most common. Okay. It is the most common uh, cytoskeleton structure and it is made up of the alpha and beta tubuli. The intermediates, this guy, it just helps in the holding of the organelles and providing strength. Remember we said um, the, the, what? The, the cytoskeleton, it anchors the organelles. It supports the organelles. So in this case, when you talk of the intermediate filaments, these are the ones which are most responsible in the holding, in the supporting, in the in the anchoring of the what of the organelles and providing the strength to them. Then we have the microfilament, which is just made up of two thin actin chains, and these two thin actin chains are are twisted around one another and one thing we need to understand is that the microfilament is the thinnest of all the cytoskeleton structure therefore one thing we need to understand is that the microtube is the thickest then followed by the intermediate which is supporting the organelles then we have the microfilament as the thinnest this is just a summary of what I have explained and I hope you can just pause the video and read them so that you'll be able to know them. Otherwise, this has already been explained. All right, let's quickly look at our exam review questions. So, this is the part which is not in your class which your lecturer doesn't do and most of the tutorial videos that you may try to watch they don't have this part so this is just something that we as an academy has put in okay so that 
the student, our student, we reduce the pressure from them by one, explaining to them in detail and then also giving them review questions. Okay, so I'm just going to show some few questions from what I've explained, but please make sure that you register with that so that you'll be able to have access to more questions on this subject. The first question is concerning a cell membrane dash. So you can see the answer is this one, but let's make sure that you take note of that uh, mistake which was here. So supposed to be NM, which is nanometer. So when you talk of the cell membrane, the cell membrane is just about 7.5 to 10 nanometer thick. So that's the thickness of the cell membrane. So when you talk of consists of about that, you no, know, the according to the notes we said two percent of cholesterol, not thirteen percent. So this is what most of students do not understand. Some of the students will go for B because their mind psychologically, their mind they they saw a percent somewhere. But that percent cannot be known. So as a result, most of them will go for, for B. So please make sure that you understand. Fluidity is modulated by transmembrane proteins. No, 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 no. That is totally wrong. We said cholesterol, it is the one, uh, it's the one that determine the fluidity of the words the membrane and not the proteins so make sure that you give attention to these important contents next question concerning human mitochondria remember the mitochondria is known as the powerhouse the mitochondria is the one which has dna so the answer here is just simply uh it multiplies by binary fission I explained that mitochondria is capable of undergoing cell division due to the presence of the what of the DNA. So another aspect we can talk about the mitochondria, this mitochondria, it also basophilic. It can be stained by basic um, by basic dyes such as methylene blue, toluene blue, hematoxylene, all those dyes that I mentioned in the previous um, in the previous um, tutorial video. So make sure that you check it out. Which of the following structure gives the nucleus a structural support framework? Remember what I said? I hope you can remember. I hope you can remember. I said Let's not confuse the cytoskeleton with the laminin. The laminin is the one which is giving the support framework of the what? Of the nucleus. Then the cytoplasm, it's giving the support to the what? To the to the to the to the cell and also to the what? Organelles, specifically the organelles which are found in the what? In the cytoplasm. Okay? Um, microfilaments. Microfilaments, we normally talked about them having two sets of actin which are normally twisted and these microfilaments are a class of cytoskeletons and these uh, microfilaments, they are the thinnest among us, the three types of cytoskeleton which is intermediate filament, microtube, and also microfilament. So please make sure that you understand that. Kelatin, uh, that's not part of this lesson. Which one of the following, um, which one of the following statement regarding the cytoskeleton is correct? The intermediate filaments are the smallest. No, 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 this is wrong. Remember what I said, the smallest are the what? Are the microfilaments and these intermediate filaments are the one which um, are the ones 
which are playing a role in the words in the in the support of the organelles then microfilaments occurs in position in position some plasma membrane protein i think i can go for this one which is my answer in this case all right guys thank you very much for joining me this was dr possibility from excel academy please do us a favor by subscribing to our youtube channel click on the notification button so that you are going to have access to our youtube channel and make sure that you tell somebody that excel academy has opened up its new brand at ridgeway campus which is just five minutes away from ridgeway campus for further information you can just whatsapp me on the following line which is on whatsapp so make sure that you whatsapp me thank you very much guys